Hello, family. Uh, God has put it on my heart to share with you why the term born again lost its effectiveness and what it actually meant and what true salvation looks like. So let's start. Jesus was uh, approached by a Pharisee by the name of Nicodemus in the third chapter of John. So I'm going to read that to you, okay? John chapter 3. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God was with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter into his mother's womb a second time? And Jesus said, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And that which is born is flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. He said, Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from or where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the spirit. So basically, Jesus is telling him, you have to be born human. So God made us in his image and likeness in Eden. And he gave us his authority and his dominion through his word and through Jesus Christ's sacrifice. We, get, we received the authority of Christ. So being born of spirit means when Adam and Eve sinned, you were separated from God. So Adam walked with God in the cool of the day, face to face. But when they sinned, a wall came down. God can't be in the presence of sin. He even turned his face from his son when he took our sins upon him on the cross. So we have to understand that. So why was this term destroyed? Well, <clears throat> I call it the modern day Pharisee. The Lord put that term in my heart a long time ago. In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus and his disciples were eating. The disciples didn't wash their hands. The Pharisees came and started complaining, you know, hey, how come your guys aren't following the traditions? You know, why aren't they doing what we know they need to do? And one thing about the Pharisees you need to understand, they weren't rabbis. They were men who studied the Torah, the word, and they thought they knew it better than everyone else. So they started to dress differently and act differently and made themselves a go-between between, between God and, and um, man himself. The Lord spoke that to my spirit one day. He said, the Pharisees got between that which I love and me. So the Pharisees were not godly men. They thought they were. So Jesus answered them and he said, you have made the word of God of no effect because of your traditions. Your lips say great things, but your heart is far from me. So Born again means that you're born of the spirit and your heart and your lips and your mind, everything is renewed spiritually, reborn. It was it died in Eden and now it's reborn with God. Jesus reconnected us to our father. So the fact that Jesus says this to them um, reveals that they had no true intimacy with the Lord. They did not rebirth their spirit what they were doing was using their mind to, and intellect and their traditions to pretend that they were religious so um you can go to church give your heart to christ even and then not work on your relationship with the lord and you can change your speech to soft sweet speech and act so jesusly and so much like a christian or what you think a christian should be and your heart is not connected the right way. So this is a, a fact of the word of God. So being born again lost its meaning, meaning by the religious day, our day Pharisees of our time. And that means that we're doing things according to what our church thinks a Christian should look like or what um, the, the dogma of the church or religion you're in thinks a Christian should look like and not the fact that you're a Christ following believer who gets in the word of God and lets God show Christ through you. That's what a Christian should look like. We should be the image of our father, the mind of Christ, and our words should not go against the word of God. 
The other thing that brought down the church and the, the faith in people was the church has compromised itself through the 501c3 and through the love of money. So and I, it, in 1 Timothy 6.10, the Bible says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some covet after, they have erred from their faith. They've pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So many church believers and many of what's happened in big ministries is the minute the money becomes big, they tend to fall away. Instead of using money to help the poor, they're buying huge buildings for their ministries and they're buying uh, expensive lamps and things that mean nothing in the kingdom of God. That money could be used to feed the homeless, to build homes for these people. If we truly had the heart of God, we would not be coveting money. And it, it has corrupted the church. So the message of salvation is actually corrupt because many pastors go to work and instead of looking to bring salvation and help and you ask them for money and they get annoyed instead of being there for the body and the lost who God loves they're busy working on their next sermon to try to get popular so that they can fill the seats and fill the offering plates and God sees it and he's sick of it I'm telling you that right now so what does it mean to be born again 1 John 1 and 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we know that Christ died on the cross and resurrected. So we accept that offering. When he was there, the Father again could not look at him. And he said, Why hast thou forsaken me? Father didn't forsake him. But he felt the pain of not being one with the Father because he always was. The Bible says in the beginning was the Word. The Word was God and the Word was with God. Jesus is that Word. So Romans 10 and 9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe it in your heart, that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's that simple. You confess with your mouth that he's Lord and you believe that he died and resurrected for your salvation and you confess your sins before him and he's faithful and just to remove them from you. And then you walk your life reading the word and, and working out your soul salvation every day with fear and trembling, not of darkness or evil. They have no power compared to God, but of the God who has the power to keep your soul out of heaven. So we, we worship him and we don't fear him like in I'm afraid of daddy. We, we, we are worship him and we have respectful fear like I don't want to disappoint him because my eternal soul could be in, in damnation and I don't want that. I want to spend my eternity, the real life that's coming for us in the presence of my father and my savior and all the others who love him. What a glorious day that's going to be. I can't wait to worship God with all the saints in heaven. It's going to be beautiful and all the angels join in and it's going to be a great, beautiful time. And I look forward to that eternity. So if you have any questions, you can put them at the end of this video. I will work hard to get to them. And I want to invite you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Simple prayer. Forgive me my sins, Lord. Help me to understand you. And I receive your sacrifice on the cross and your resurrection for my life. Be the Lord of my life, Jesus. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Hope this helps a little bit. Take care. Bye-bye.